Hey, I'm Lachlan and welcome to this incredible video where I'm going to be talking about my life, the future and everything in between. I'm so excited. Stay watching. The future is exciting because there are endless opportunities and part of that I want to create a vision for my future which I've done recently and I want to share that with you today. So looking back um, parts of my life I've lived in New Zealand, I've lived in Sydney Australia and now I'm in Melbourne and it all kind of happens um, in terms of me starting my business when my sister Kate um, started her company Kate Creations by Kate a few years ago and her having a cupcake shop she needed so much packaging and she really found it really difficult to get high quality and just decent packaging that was actually in stock for her business. So Kate grew her company to many different stores and she required so much packaging and she really did ask me for a little bit of help and for me at the time I was actually working as a flight attendant traveling um, internationally in Australia and overseas so I said well I may as well try use some of my connections that I have overseas and try source these products for you. So what I did even though I wasn't living in the same state as Kate at the time I started getting samples from overseas and sourcing different suppliers um, mainly in China that were able to make these cupcake boxes for my sister and then we got these incredible pink cupcake boxes that were fully branded with her business details all over them and they're actually quite iconic now everyone recognizes them throughout the shopping center and since then people kept coming to her and saying hey Kate um, I love your packaging where do you get your packaging from Kate kept putting pressure on me saying hey people keep asking me can I give them your details and I was like no look I'm really happy working um, as a flight attendant doing my job um, and then the day finally hit where I kind of wanted to be more fulfilled in life I really wanted the challenge of doing something um, greater, something that really gave me, you know, the ins like inspiration to wake up every day and be like, hey, I'm so excited to go to work today and do amazing things, build amazing customer relationships and provide great quality products. And that's when I decided, okay, I'm gonna make this a reality and I'm gonna build Boxed. Um, so Boxed was formed. So Box is my company, it's a wholesale packaging company, mainly ta tailoring to small business and um, also medium business, I guess. Um, it just depends on um, them and their, the networks that you have, whether you can get those type of clients. So I started Boxed in September 2018. And what's really I guess weird about the whole situation is it was built as an online company because at the time I was still working in another company so of course I didn't have the time to commit to having like a retail store or something like that. So when I started the company being an online company kind of requires you to have an online website right otherwise you can't make sale if you don't have a website. So we didn't actually even have a website until January of 2019 so that was like three or four months later. And I'm like, why aren't we getting any sales? And I was like, oh, of course, we have no website. Common sense, right, for an online company. And we went to a trade show actually in November of that year. And it was really exciting because we met all different people face to face and showed them all of our products. We brought all these samples in from overseas that we had made, but all of our stock hadn't even arrived yet from China. People were loving it, people were wanting to place pre-orders. And it was really exciting to see all of your hard work designing you know, 30, 40 new products um, pay off because customers really did love the product and wanted to, to shop with you as a brand now. You know, and that was really exciting for me because it was my, my first main business. I mean, before this, when I was a little kid, I had this little like lolly business where I'd sell lollies down the street to all the kids, which was like super exciting. I'd be like, okay, 20 cents for a gumball. I even got a gumball machine, one of those massive red gumball machines that you normally see at the shopping center. And we had that in my house and I would charge everyone 20 cents. I'd turn it and all the gumballs would go round and round and round. Um, and I guess that was the start of my journey. My parents had a, um, a business electrical company for many years also. So it was kind of like in our blood for myself and for my sister. And that's how that started. So Box since then, January, we launched our website. It was 
looking back, like, I mean, at the time, of course, I was probably really happy with it. But now that I'm looking back, I'm like, oh, it probably wasn't the best website. It was pretty basic. And funnily enough, a few months later, it one day just crashed and stopped working. So I had to implement a whole different design, which is kind of like a very minimalistic um, and basic design. But I have had lots of um, website development experience because I actually developed uh, my sister's website and I used to have my own, I know, another little company when I was younger, about 15 years old, um, a website hosting and development company then. So I guess I've had lots of little companies when I was younger. Um, the other one probably makes me sound like I've had all these different interests, but I was a mobile DJ, so I had my own little DJ set up and I'd go to like school, like, you know, year eight formals, for example, and play um, as a DJ there for the night. Um, which looking back was not much DJing, probably more just like using music and pressing stop and play. But I had this cool little like set up and made myself look good. My mum would drive me around and would have our like all of our speakers, smoke machines um, and the lighting and you know the disco lights, everyone was dancing, having a great time. It was pretty cool looking back at my childhood. So moving forward, we're looking at Box 2019. It started growing, growing and growing so quickly. We had our own warehouse that we leased in Melbourne. Um, it was in Hopper's Crossing. And what I had to do when I wasn't working my other job was pack orders every day, try and meet the freight cutoffs. It was so difficult being a new company because all of our packaging was so big and heavy and it's so expensive to ship. So I was trying to find like, you know, who, who could I ship it with, you know, cheaper. And I found some other providers. Sometimes it would take 15 or 20 days to get to someone in Perth or in Queensland. And like, for me, that was just like completely unacceptable against what I would think as being a good service. And so I, I was really trying my best to try create a better like value to our customer, but also make you know, the brands, yeah, more well known for having great service, quick delivery. And it was just so difficult to find a freight company that would want to work with us because we were still so small. And I think for many small businesses, they, they deal with the same struggle where they're, they're trying to, you know, reduce their cost, but offer a better value to their customers. But a lot of people don't want to deal with them because they're not a large scale business. So for us, we continued to grow luckily, which then allowed us to um, take on partnerships with some better freight companies and we were able to deliver a lot of our freight next day. I think it was like 80 or 90% next day, which is incredible. Even to this day, um, that's the same case. And that's why we have so many amazing customer reviews. So moving forward, um, Towards November, we moved to a third party logistics warehouse, which is in Tullamarine. So just to like pause for a minute, a third party logistics company is pretty much just another company and they specialize in warehousing and logistics and that's what they do every day. So my philosophy is you can't be an expert at everything. It's literally not possible. So what you need to do is find the experts that you can partner with to help create an incredible brand and experience for your customers. So that's what we did. We partnered with them. We moved all of our stock out of the old warehouse and into this one in Tullamarine. And they took over handling all of our picking and packing and storage. They also handle all of our inbound freight um, from China as well, which is incredible. Um, and it's so nice when you finally find talented people that you can work with that can create you know, this value proposition that you want for your business. And you finally get the pressure taken off you where you don't have to do everything yourself. And for me, that was a lifesaver. I mean, I was working part-time still as an international flight attendant and, you know, trying to travel between so many different countries for that. And also traveling for my own business overseas. It was so difficult to try juggle everything. I even remember landing into America and I think I just did like an 18 or 19 hour flight, it was super long. And 
I had like 60 emails in my inbox and I was like, oh my gosh. Like I remember showing my friend Brie actually at the time and I was like, Brie, I don't like, I'm so tired. I don't know what to do. Like, should I stay up and try to do them all? Or like, like, what do I do? And that was the point when I was like, I seriously need help. And I hired Kirk, which is um, one of our customer um, success team. So he looks after all the customer support for Boxed and he was a massive help because he has a lot of background in like Excel spreadsheets and um, also working for already an Australian company. He knew all about, you know, customer support and the systems and there's so many things that go into running an e-commerce store. So it's just nice to have someone that actually understands a lot of that. And then um, later on, I guess we had November Black Friday sales. It was massive and totally unexpected. We started selling out of all of our you know, incredible products because we were gaining so many new customers that we couldn't keep up with buying from China. I mean, when we place our orders with China, it takes approximately two months before they land into Australia. So if I place my order now, they'll be coming two months later. And that's really difficult when you're a growing company because you have to put up the cash flow to buy all this inventory, but then you've got to wait until it arrives before you even can you know, cash in on the money. And of course, we were quite smart and we did pre-orders for some of our items so we could gain that cash back straight away. But I mean, not everyone's going to pre-order because a lot of the people want the product straight away. And it's really difficult when you run out of stock of a particular item because a lot of the people buying from us are all small businesses and they really, really rely on you to have stock for their businesses to succeed and flourish as well. So it's a really difficult situation because then you have to tell them, sorry, we're out of stock. And then they will start looking for other suppliers that have more reliability and able to cater for their needs because they, they just want stock when they need it. And I get that. And that's why it's really um, disappointing. Like you feel disappointed in yourself because you know, for so many months you're running Excel spreadsheets and you're trying to predict your stock levels and because at the time we were doing it all manually and you know, you put all this pressure on yourself and then you, I mean, as an e-commerce owner, like you're the one to blame when you don't have enough stock and in all honesty, it, it kind of sucks um, because all this pressure just kind of gets to you. So in e-commerce, I kind of like to think of it as like a roller coaster. So it's like you're up on a high one minute, you know, you've made a hundred thousand dollars in sales or whatever the figure may be for your business. And you're like, that's incredible. We've done so well this month. And then the next minute tomorrow you have no sales or you run out of stock. And then you're like, wow, no one's ever going to buy from me again. I'm like the worst company ever. And then you start, you know, doubting yourself. And I think that's only, you know, human nature to do that. But it, you know, it's, it is such a, a ride. Like you feel like you're riding the roller coaster and there is an end. I think you have to always remember for anyone that has their own e-commerce business or wants to in the future is that, you know, the roller coaster ride will exist. It will be there all the time. You will hit highs and you will hit lows, but you just need to remember to keep pushing through and to always get on that roller coaster. As long as you're on the tracks, you're gonna keep going up and down. And that's the main thing. Don't stop because at the end of the day, things will always get better if you keep working for it. And that's why I keep working hard in my other job and then flowing that back into box. And recently we hit coronavirus and coronavirus impacted so many businesses um, globally. And for us, before the Australian JobKeeper payment was announced, which we weren't actually eligible for, which I'll talk about in a minute, but many businesses were. And what that means is that that put money back into the economy and allowed people to start spending again. And that JobKeeper payment was so crucial for so many Australian businesses because people started spending on our website. And since the JobKeeper payment, we've seen triple or quadruple sales um, figures for Box, which is like, incredible. But as I said before, when you have really, really high growth, then of course you're going to run out of stock and that's where we're sitting at this point. So with coronavirus having an incredible impact on us after the JobKeeper payment was announced, it was actually really reassuring for me because 
I thought for a while, which many, many businesses probably thought the same, you know, is this, is the whole world going to shut down? You know, are we going to be able to trade after this? Will I have to close my business? There's like so many questions that you constantly ask in your mind because people aren't spending at that time and you're so unsure. But the really, really great news was for us that it continued to, to spike and that meant that we were then able to expand our team. So while other businesses perhaps were closing, which is really, really unfortunate, um, we were in the good position where we could actually hire more people. So I had to make the decision to hire another person in our company to help us out with our custom packaging products and a lot of our design of our website as our website is constantly being redeveloped. I like to think of it, if you go into a retail store, you a lot of the time will see stores being renovated or their storefronts changing with you know different clothes or different store windows. And just like that for e-commerce stores, we also need to update our website. So what's important with your website is that it needs to be very easy to use and of course customer friendly and it needs to be extremely fast because otherwise search engines also bring down your rankings but we all know if you wait more than two or three seconds for a website to load, most of the time you will just abandon the website and you won't wait for it to finish. It just doesn't provide that experience that we're so used to getting nowadays, you know, with our very fast technology. So with the window shopping, it's just like that for e-commerce stores. A lot of people think that e-commerce stores have no costs, but this is so untrue. Running a website is actually quite expensive and there's lots of developing costs as well as all the servers and everything else that goes into it. So I hired a new person, her name was Brianna, and I was really excited to hire her. We did some online training because during coronavirus, we can't meet face to face, and she's actually from south of Sydney. So we did all of our training online, and that's obviously really difficult to do for both her and for me, because sitting there you know, in a video style conference it's just not the same when you want that human interaction, which I'm so used to having and being so social. Anyway, pushing past that, Bree's doing an incredible job. I'm so happy to have her on the box team. And I know that the future is only going to become better for all of us at Box, and our sales are only gonna to continue to rise because I know that we have such a good value proposition to our customers. But for me, most importantly, it's time that now I can start taking some time out of the business to genuinely look after myself. So this might be going and having a facial or going and taking my dog for a walk. And I was watching a women in leadership panel um, interview the other day actually by our partners at Trustpilot. And it was so interesting because Merlene mentioned, and Merlene's the general manager of practicology in Australia. And she mentioned that you shouldn't feel guilty for taking time out to look after yourself as an owner. So for me, I was like, this is so true. And for a long time, you always want to you know, provide the best experience. Always want to have notifications enabled on your phone of every sale. Every time we got a sale, my phone used to go, cha-ching, 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 <laughs> literally. And it would be going off some days and you'd feel this instant energy rush. Oh my gosh, I got a sale. And then the next day, obviously when you got nothing for a few hours, you'd be like, oh my gosh, why haven't I got anything? So Mer Merlene's point was so important, saying that you do need to take some time out and not feel guilty. And each of us obviously want to take time out and do different things. For me, I love going to clubs and I love partying and seeing my friends and having drinks and eating cheese, probably too much during COVID, but you know, going and doing those social things. But for other people, they might just want to lay on the couch and relax. And I think every entrepreneur has their own out valve. So I get asked a lot of the time, what is your advice for someone that's looking to start their own business? And I guess there's so many responses that I could give, but I really just want to focus on one. And that one is just get started. So just give it a shot. A lot of people for so many months or even years have a dream, a dream of starting a business, might be working for another company and they really want to do it, but they're too scared to leave. They are feared themselves that if they leave, then they'll have no money or, you know, they won't be successful in their own eyes or their parents' eyes or their friends' eyes. And I think 
for me, my best advice is just give it a shot. Start the business if you really want to, if you want to work at your other company, work from, you know, work from home, create your business. If you're selling products, you can send them out after hours, that kind of thing. But for so many people, they're so scared of other people judging them and thinking that they won't be successful. And it's really such a shame because, you know, in our society, we should really be building each other up and wanting to give it a shot. My thoughts about Box when I first started it, and I did put quite a lot of money into Box, or what I thought was a lot of money at the time. I just need to give it a shot. And if, I, if it doesn't work out, at least I'll have no regrets. And I think that's really important because at least you know if you give it your absolute best shot and if it doesn't work out, then the worst case scenario is that you may lose a little bit of money. But I mean, we can all go and earn more, more money, right? It's not like it's something that isn't achievable. I think the main thing is we have limited time. So we need to focus on you know, building the company, trying to see if it will work. And if it doesn't work, then so be it. Go and get another job. And that was kind of my look at it. I just got started. I didn't have an amazing website. I didn't have many staff members or if any at all. I had my family helping me out at the time and it all just started. I took on a lease. I signed the lease for the warehouse and you know, we moved there. It all just happened. And it was because I took the risk and I took the risk of things potentially failing, which yeah, it sucks knowing that potentially it might not work out. But I work so hard because I didn't want it to fail. And it's because I wanted it to be successful so badly, I made it happen. And I think that's what you need to focus on. If you want to do something, get off the couch, get on that laptop, start researching a product that you want and find what your vision is and make it a reality. It's actually quite easy to develop a website or to open a store. Those kind of things, it actually is quite easy and quick but you just need to commit to it and decide in your own mind that's what you really want. The second most common question that I get is, well, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to sell. And do you know what? <laughs> that's such a difficult question to answer because you really need to find something that you're passionate about. And that's so important. If you don't have a passion for something, then most of the time the business won't succeed because it requires so much of your time. Unless you're already rich and you can afford to hire many people, then you will have to commit and put lots of time and effort in it. And if you're not committed to it, and if you're not seeing the vision from day one, then you won't fully commit to it and you won't be able to make it a success. In terms of industries that are growing, if we look at Amazon US, they had more than $300 billion in sales last year on their platform online. So if we look at the US model, we're probably a few years behind in Australia for e-commerce. And now with coronavirus has massively impacted um, like a positive sales for e-commerce stores in Australia. So if you are looking at potential businesses to open, I would say totally go for an e-commerce store and launch perhaps a product or a service. It depends what you're offering. Um, for products, you know, like beauty, skincare, all of these things, they're very, very populated. So there's lots of competition. And there will be competition for most products. It's gonna be pretty rare that something hasn't already been invented yet that you wanna launch. So then you have to start thinking about, okay, if it is a competitive space, what is my USP? So what is my unique selling proposition? How am I different from all of the other competitors? And you might say it's your incredible customer service because you're available 24 seven, or you might say that you know super quick shipping with Australia Post. But you also need to work out how can I enhance the customer experience? And I think this is where a lot of bigger companies fail. I mean, have you recently thought, oh, I need to call my bank or I need to call my telco? And what is your response from that? I mean, I've never heard of someone saying, I can't wait to call my telco. Like it's literally just something that we've been burned by terrible customer service for so long that people hate hearing, 
press one for sales, press two for support. We literally, our brains switch off now hearing that because it's just, we know that it's setting us up for a fail and it's gonna route, route us, sorry, to a, a team member that doesn't have the skills to do what we're asking them for and it's just a time waste. So I think you need to focus on what is your USP? And if you are wanting to create great customer experiences, you need to think about, okay, do I offer video consultations if I'm a beauty therapist over the Skype or there's so many different um, technology platforms which we can discuss in a different video, but that's something that's growing. You know, what about augmented reality where people can see your products in person using their mobile phone or their tablet and see how that fits in their house? For example, if you wanted to sell a couch or a, a stool, you could, they could see on their phone how it fits into their house and see if it's the right size and, and colors. And that means that there'll be less customer returns because they will know the size before they buy and they'll be happy with their purchase. So there's all different things that you have to think about. I think the main key thing that I want to get across is don't force yourself to launch a business if you're not 100% in it. And it kind of sounds simple, but it really is so important because if you're not 100% in it, you're never going to give it the energy that it needs. And it may be successful, there is that chance, but most of the time I think the stats show that it probably isn't. So moving forward, the top tips are e-commerce for sure. And there's so many platforms, there's Amazon in Australia, eBay, MyDeal, there's so many marketplaces online that you can get involved with and launch your product on. And otherwise, if you wanted a physical store, like you know, at your local shopping center, most people now are moving to the model of offering a showroom. So you'd go to these stores and you'd have an incredible experience. Someone might walk in, you might offer them a champagne, you might offer them a drink or um, you know, book in a time for a fitting, for example, if it's a clothing store. The clothes will then get made or manufactured to suit the person and then you'd send them to their house. This is a different kind of um, shopping experience I think customers are wanting now. A lot of people don't want to come and just grab a product, otherwise you know, they'll just go to their local supermarket. So the best part about being an entrepreneur is the freedom. It is so rewarding to not have a boss barking at you, telling you what to do at all times of the day. It's really actually really nice because you can choose your own hours most of the time, depending on your business, and you can choose how you want, what you want to do. For example, I know myself that I feel quite talented in accounting and finance and some website development and coding, um, product design, those kind of things. But I don't feel very talented in things like filming um, or product photography. I don't feel strong in warehousing on logistics. And that's why all of those things, I partner with incredible people from other businesses to help me fulfill those things. And they're the experts. And that's why I, I really love e-commerce because you get to work with other people and make yourself, you know, make your job easier for yourself. And that's really exciting. I also love being an entrepreneur because I have such a love for travel and I love booking a ticket last minute, like today, for example, literally saying, oh, you know what, it's actually really cold here in Melbourne, maybe I wanna go to Bali for a few days and work from there. And I literally just jump on Skyscanner, book a, a flight, off I go. And it's so, like, it's like you're in a movie in a way, like there's, you know, people dream about being able to just book something and go, and it's really, like um, adri like the adrenaline just flows through your body because it's an adventure. It's something that you haven't planned or waited for for so long. And sometimes you just need that little pick me up that just gets you going every day. And I really love traveling and seeing other people's cultures. And I actually have friends all over the world now, which I wish I could see more, but due to coronavirus, obviously I haven't been able to recently, but I'm really looking forward to the future because the future is going to allow me to travel more, both in Australia and overseas. In Australia, I'll be able to go visit my employees and my partners in all different states. 
as well as a few customers, which is exciting. And also internationally because lots of my friends are based overseas and I know everyone's been impacted differently with the coronavirus recently and that's why it, I'd really like to see so many of them because I think a lot of us are in so different circumstances. Like for us here in Australia, most of us are doing okay and overseas it can be a total different story. Like I was chatting with one of my friends from Bali last night and you know, he said he hasn't had work for more than three or six months. So, you know, it's such a long time and now he's looking to the future and wondering what he's going to be doing. And, you know, I feel for these people overseas that don't have um, or aren't as fortunate as us. So the future is really exciting though, because I'll be able to go and visit them and see how they're going and continue to build up my friendships and party in a few different countries. I actually was really looking forward to going to a festival that was on this time in Thailand, um, but sadly it was cancelled. So I'm sure there's going to be lots of events now in the next six to 12 months. Um, lots of like festivals and music um, parties and different things all over the world. So I'm so excited. Did miss out on Europe summer, which is now in June, July. 2020 but I'm sure we can make that up in the next few years. The exciting part is that I work from my laptop most of the time so I literally can move around with my laptop and I can log into all of the systems I need. We've set up so many different automations that a lot of the time these automations run in the background from computer servers and don't need any human interaction to do a lot of things. So day to day people probably say what do you actually do? And I guess that's a really good question. Um, day to day, my day to day is different every day. So I'd usually wake up and once I feel ready to tackle my emails, I would jump onto them and just go through them. My so my personal email for the company just has anything I'm working on with my suppliers, my partners. So things like scheduling video shoots or product photography, things like working with our graphic designer, and our website designer um, might also have other emails about um, new products with our manufacturers that are launching and sometimes like little things for the future like webinars and you know working out future tasks like um, seeing what our competitors have to offer and things like trade shows um, and especially with coronavirus things have been moved around so it's just rescheduling and booking those into the calendar and then I normally go and tackle the customer support inbox and I'll have a look at what's assigned to me. And that means all of the customers that have messaged in since the previous day um, that are all related to me. So any of my customers, um, I'll go and tackle those. And I'll also um, help out any of my other staff members that have things that are that they need to reply to. If they need help, they would have asked me for help there. So I would have um, replied to them and given them some assistance. I mean, business is all about relationships with people, right? And you need to be able to train your staff members to perform their jobs better. A lot of people, and this is like a, a trusty tip, a lot of people get angry at their staff members for not performing their job. But most of the time they don't realize that the staff member doesn't intentionally try to do the wrong thing. Most of the time it's because they haven't been given the training or perhaps they need to do the task a few times to remember it. So they might need a checklist or they might need to film it so they remember how to do it. And that's what we need to remember. People don't intentionally usually try to do the wrong thing. So I would like to think that my staff, my staff like my management style where I will coach and develop them and if I notice that it is a trend that they keep asking the same question, I will film how to do something and then they will have that saved for the future. I'm forever learning as a person. And what that means is every day I learn so many new things from my fellow colleagues, customers, um, partners, and so many people in life, even my family. And what that means is I use those learnings to help me grow myself to be a better person and to grow my knowledge for the future. And part of that means that the future is really exciting because it's forever changing. 
and I'm excited because I'm able to intertwine my business with my personal life. And I think that's important to have a personal life. And it might not mean that I work Monday to Friday because I certainly don't, but I do try to have Sundays off. Sundays are meant to be like just Lachlan time, unless I'm traveling on a flight or something like that where I can't. Sunday is a day which recently I made as a day off and that was part of my future flat plans to start enjoying some downtime and being able to completely switch off, turning off all the notifications on my phone, things like that, just to have a, a day off, call my friends, video chat my friends. The other night I even played trivia online, had a few drinks um, and it was all via technology, which is incredible. But the future is exciting because I, I really do love people and I love being social and I do want to see people in person. And once coronavirus has calmed down here in Australia, then I'll be able to do that, which is really exciting. And for Box itself, at the same time, I want to grow. We're planning so many new product, products that have already been planned. And we're launching new ranges, like we're launching a designer range soon, which is like an industry first in Australia. We're launching some biodegradable packages because we'd really like to do better things for the environment on behalf of our customers. And I think if you're going to create a packaging company in today's day and age, then you need to provide those options. So that's exciting because just biodegradable in itself is a massive industry and it's changing all the time. The types of materials that you can get um, working with different manufacturers, it's really complex and a lot of people don't realize that, but there is a lot that goes in behind the scenes and that's why I'm excited to launch it because I think it will, be, it will be a game changer for a lot of our products that we have in Australia. Um, the future also involves Box becoming bigger and we've got all of the foundations now in place. And if I talk about the foundations, these are things like our website is very stable, fast, and able to support thousands of transactions per day. Our warehouse, we have an incredible warehouse team, McHugh and Eastwood, and they have a great warehouse management system that syncs with our, our e-commerce system and that can support thousands of orders a day also. And they have the team, the expertise and the people to make all of our orders get dispatched on the same business day or bring in all of the logistics from China. So we have all the technology in place now to allow us to grow and scale quite quickly and we've seen that already in the last few months. So now I'm trying to start planning for the future. And I mean, I'm probably not one to do massive planning, but I, I do like to get the foundation set. And when I'm planning, I'm like, okay, trying to forecast the orders. And then sometimes some months things just get completely blown out the window. So then you have to be ready to adapt and adapt to change. Things are always changing. And that's why for me, I am easily adaptable. I even mentioned to you before that I'll literally book a flight last minute and go overseas and do things that make me happy because I realize that you have to be able to adapt to change. Otherwise you will get a little bit forgotten in this new world, which is full of technology and you have to adapt. So part of my vision is once travel is allowed, I want to take you on a journey with me and I want to share all of my day-to-day -day life, I guess, and travel um, with you via YouTube. And I think that's going to be something that will be really exciting because it's not just me sitting down chatting to you about this. I really want to show you visually what happens in my life and the day-to-day -day operations that so many people are interested in. So that's super exciting. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to film this content was because I, I genuinely did want to give back. Some people do ask me for, you know, help and advice and, you know, of course I want to give that and help people as much as I can because I feel privileged that, you know, I have a good education and I've been fortunate to be around good mentors and people that can help me to gain all this information. But I realise that a lot of people don't have that and you know they get bombarded with ads on Instagram or Facebook trying to sell them a course when most of the time those people running those courses are just there to make money which is a you know a corporate kind of greed instead of actually trying to be genuine and help 
you know, their followers or their people. And that's what I want to do. I genuinely want to help people that want to start a business and are unsure how, and hopefully help them to reach their dreams. Because even recently a friend said to me, I'm really stuck in life and I really don't know what to do anymore. You know, I work my day to day job and I'm not fulfilled. I'm not really happy at all. And it's really sad because I was like, oh, um, like initially I was, I was taken back a bit because I was like, wow, he's such a strong, like confident person. And I was really taken back because I didn't expect that from him. And it goes to show that all of us, we all have our vulnerabilities. And I think if you can help inspire one or two people, then that's really incredible. And for me, like I even have, you know, my own, you know, community of people um, being gay as well as not, you know, easy in certain parts of the world. And, you know, being, you know, a gay entrepreneur makes it even more difficult because naturally some people might judge you or different things, but I haven't let that, you know, affect me. And I'm really lucky that I have incredible family that support me so much. And that's what makes such a big difference for me being able to, you know, be confident myself and help other people because I feel that I'm stable so I'm able to help them. Thank you so much for watching. It has been incredible so far and I really am looking forward to the future. I really want to take you on a journey with me and show you incredible countries overseas, show you how my business operates and how I work day to day. Um, it's incredible to have such an amazing people that watch my videos and get inspired by it. I love reading your comments, so please do leave a comment and give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. Until next time, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.